بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we'll continue from where we left off last week so we'll stop the lesson where the sheikh was explaining the ayah i think it was verse 163 from suratul anam yeah verse 162 and 63 162 and 63 where the sheikh was explaining um uh, those two verses uh, from the quran and so we stopped where the red highlighted text is the sheikh he said وَمَحْيَا وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِي وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِي And my life or my living and my dying or my death. Yeah? The Shaykh, he says, هَذَا تَعْمِيمٌ بَعْدَ تَخْسِيسٌ لِمَا خَسَّ هَاتَيْنَ الْعِبَادَتَيْنَ بِذِكْرِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالنُّسُكُ عُمِّمَا بِقَوْلِهِ وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِي أي ما أحيا عليه وما أموت عليه من إيمان ذَلِكَ so then the Sheikh says, we're going back to the, just let's go one line back uh, to this ayah. The staff that is, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So we go up to the, the latter part of this ayah of uh, 162 from Suratul Al-An'am. And the Sheikh says that if we look at the ayah from the beginning and to the end of it, then you see like at the start it's, it, there's specificity in the ayah in terms of it specifies I, my prayer and my my sacrifices that I make for Allah. Yeah. And then there is a, and then the next two points that I mentioned within the ayah are general. So there's, there's a general context followed by specific, uh, sorry, specific followed by general. And then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, uh, that he says here, he continues and he says, i.e. that my living, my living and my death, what I do while I'm living and what I do at the point of when I'm dying and my death from, uh, from Iman, from faith and from righteous actions um, and all of that which uh, you uh, bring forth to seek nearness to Allah, all the acts of worship that you do to seek nearness to Allah is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds and everything that exists. So then the Shaykh, he continues, he goes on to say, Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. And he explains that, that the lamb in Lillah, the lamb in Lillah, it's in reference to who has that right. And he calls it Lam al This is more to do with Arabic language, uh, linguistics, but um, uh, best way to say in English, I guess, uh, from uh, the way I could explain it, is that the lamb is to do with the lamb of right or who gets that right. And it's, of course, it's Allah. That all worship, everything that you do in terms of that which comes under worship is for Allah. All of it is for Allah. Your living, your dying, your prayer, your uh, your sacrificing, God, your worship, your ibadat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has the right. It's his right that you you direct all of that to him. And then the Shaykh just mentions that here. 
And he says that it should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else, as mentioned earlier in the previous lessons as well. So then the Shaykh says, Rabbil Alameen. And he says, وَذِكْرُ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ فِيهِ إِشَارَةٌ إِلَىٰ دَلِيلِ اسْتِحْقَاقِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ هُوَ وَحْدَهُ الْمُسْتَحَقُّ لِذَلِكَ لِأَنَّهُ وَحْدَهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ فَكَمَا أَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ تَفَرَّدَ بِالْخَلْقِ وَالْرِزْقِ وَالْمُلْكِ وَالتَّدْبِيرِ فَيَجِبُ أَنْ يُفْرَدْ أَنْ يُفْرَدْ أَنْ يُفْرَدَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ بِالْإِبَادَةِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So in this paragraph, the following paragraph, the Shaykh, he says that explaining Rabbi Al-Alameen, i.e. the Lord of all the worlds, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that all of that, it's just adding on extra into uh, extra emphasis on why and the reasoning uh, behind directing all of your worship and whatever you do in your living and everything that that you are you are for is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is directed and Allah is uh, the one who deserves all of that worship and nobody else and then the sheikh mentions for example from uh, uh, from uh, the uh, um, tawhid al-rububiyya point of view that um, for example Allah you know uh, um, he says here that Allah is the one, you know, who, who, who created us, who provided us our provisions, you know, and, and He's the owner of everything and He takes care of the affairs of the universe. And so, therefore, it's obligatory upon us to single out our all of our acts of, wor- of worship and direct them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the Lord of all the worlds and He takes care of all these affairs and nobody else does. And so, that's another reason why. So then, the Shaykh continues. He goes on to say, وَقَوْلُهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ and that's uh, the the following ayah, verse 163 from Surah Al-An'am. He says, وَقَوْلُهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ أَيْذًا فِيهِ تَقْرِيرٌ لِلتَّوْحِيدٍ مِنْ جِهَةٍ مِنْ جِهَةٍ أُخْرَى قَالَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ أَيْ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ فِي رُبُوبِيَّةِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَكَذَلِكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ فَالْعِبَ كما أنه أز وجل تفرد بالربوبية لا شريك له فيجب أن يفرد بالعبادة سبحانه وتعالى لا ند له. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say and explain the next part in the se- in the, the ayah that follows لا شريك له and he says you know meaning that uh, and he has no partner he has no partner with him he has no partner and the Sheikh says also in it is uh, a testification uh, for Tawheed as well. Yeah? Uh, uh, from a different angle. And he says, Qala, and he said, La sharika la, that he has no partners. Uh, I.e., he says, A, he says, I.e., the Lord of the worlds. He has no partner. There's no partner. He has no partner. Uh, in his lordship, he has no partner in his lordship and and, and neither in his ilahiyah, which is, is of worship, no partner. And all of the worship, it's his right that it be directed to him and not anybody else. Just like, you know, that Allah, that this lordship is single to him, is to him, all of the lordship belongs to Allah, then likewise the worship as well. And this is what the Shaykh is saying here. And the Shaykh says, he finishes that sentence off in this paragraph, La nidda lahu, meaning that he has no rival, he has no partner, he has there's there's nobody else. He is the sole provider, creator of everything, the sole deity. There's there's none worthy of worship in truth except him. And he has no partners. And then the Shaykh continues, he goes on to say that. وهذا الإعلان والصدع بالحق والهدى في هذه الآية الذي أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى به نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم جاء في مقام إبطال إبطال أقائد المشركين وضلالاتهم ومن جملة تلك الضلالات تقديم القرابين والنسائق والنسائق والذبائح لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى تقديمها للأصنام وللأشجار ولغيرها مما يأتقدون فيه ويتقربون إليه وقد ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى حالهم العجيبة البعيسة الشنيعة القبيحة 
ذكرها الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم مبينا عز وجل أنهم كانوا يتخذون مع الله الشركاء في هذه الإبادة قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وجعلوا لله مما ذرأ من الحرث والأنعام والأنعام نصيبا So then the Shaykh says in this paragraph that we've been reading in Arabic, the Shaykh goes on to say that he says, and this is for this is proclaiming or making clear uh, what the truth is and what the what the guide what the true guidance is in this ayah that we read earlier in the previous paragraph. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his Prophet and Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Shaykh, he says that it comes in from the point, from the perspective of uh, falsifying all of those false beliefs that are out there. And particularly the false beliefs of the polytheists and their misguidance. And the Shaykh says, and from a general view or from, uh, let's say, more of a general outlook on this, those misguidances, for example, uh, bringing about you know these kinds of sacrifices for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example they um, uh, bring forth uh, you know they sacrifice let's say an animal uh, for their um, idols or you know or the things that they worship from idols from created objects whether that's a tree a statue a picture wherever it might be an animal an angel, it could be anything, a prophet, people worship anything. Uh, uh, besides Allah, there's a, a, a limitless uh, number of things that they can worship. But in summary, the Sheikh is saying here that uh, just as an example, that they bring forth uh, and they sacrifice uh, and they and they perform an act of worship basically, as, as in let's say sacrifice here, uh, and they, they present that to these false deities, wherever they may be, whether it's a tree, whether it's a statue, etc., and the Sheikh says that they, you know, they uh, they believe in that, uh, you know, whatever they believe in and what they bring forth to, i.e., their false deities. And the Sheikh says that Allah uh, Azza wa Jal has mentioned uh, their affairs or their condition, uh, their strange uh, and you know, out of amazement, their condition, uh, their very you know bad position, should we say, uh, and despicable uh, actions and deeds that they commit i.e. the shirk that they fall into and uh, the shaykh says that Allah mentioned this in the Quran clarifying uh, to us uh, the situation with regards to these kinds of people and the acts that they, they commit and then uh, we read an ayah and if we go to uh, Surah Al-Anam verse 136 we will see the meanings so Surah Al-Anam verse 136 let's read that and they assign to Allah a share of the tilth and cattle which he has created. And they say, this is for Allah according to their pretending. And this is for our Allah so-called partners. For the share of their Allah so-called partners reaches not Allah. While the share of Allah reaches uh, uh, their Allah so-called partners. Evil is the way they judge. So uh, just to break down that a little bit, it may not seem entirely clear. That if somebody commits... If if somebody says, "Look, I'm worshiping Allah, but I'm also like uh, sacrificing for other than Allah," then uh, the explanation of the ayah there is that whoever associates uh, partners with Allah and brings forth, let's say, a sacrifice to other than Allah and says, "Oh, but this is just a share of it is going over there," as in a share of my worship is going to other than Allah, and and the other part of it is going to Allah, then Allah says that in fact, whoever does that. Then none of it reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's not because, why? Because there's no ikhlas there as a shaykh You will come to say There's no sincerity there There's no purity There's no pureness That that whole act of worship It should be for Allah 100% And not anybody else And so uh, that's what the shaykh is mentioning here And he goes on to say hey, جَعَلُوا لَهُمْ وَعَيْدًا جَعَلُوا لِغَيْرِهِ فَلَمْ يُخْلَصُوا لَهُ جَلَ وَعَلَى هَذَا الْجَعَلْ وَهَذَا التَّقَرُّبْ بَلْ جَعَلُوا مَا وَالْأَسْنَامِ نِدٌّ وَشَرِيكًا قَالَ وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مِمَّا ذَرَأَ مِنَ الْحَرْثِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ ذَرَأَ أَيْ خَلَقَ وَأَوْجَدَ وَهَذَا فِي الدَّلِيلِ أَلَا وُجُوبِ إِفْرَادِ اللَّهِ بِهَذَا التَّقَرُّبْ لِأَنَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي ذَرَأَ أَيْ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَوْجَدَ وَهُوَ الَّذِي تَفَضَّلَ وَأَنْعَم فَوَجَبَ أَنْ يُفْرَدَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِالْعِبَادَةِ وَمِنْ ذَلِكُمْ الذَّبْحُ 
ولكن كانت حال المشركين في هذه الإبادة الشرك والتنديد. So then the Sheikh just mentions that from the ayah, uh, meaning that you know they've they've shared their worship alongside Allah, they've shared it with someone else, and therefore Allah rejects it and it never reaches Allah. That act of worship never reaches Allah. Why? Because they've committed shirk, and they are worshiping that which Allah created, as mentioned in the ayah as well. So then the Sheikh brings the ayah again for our reference. He says. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مِمَّا ذَرَأَ مِنَ الْحَرْثِ وَالْعَنْعَامِ نَصِيبًا فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ فَلَا يَصِلُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ, يس... فهو يَصِلُوا إِلَى شُرَكَائِهِمْ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ So that's the whole ayah that we had read the meaning of as well. The Sheikh mentions the whole ayah there. From Surah Al-An'am, verse 136, whoever wants to have another look at it. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, أي أن هؤلاء وقد تفضل الله عليهم بالحرث الزروع الطيبة النافعة المفيدة وتفضل عليهم بهيمة الأنعام ولكنهم عندما يتقربون لشكر شكر المنعم شكر المتفضل يقسمون هذا الحرث ويقسمون بهيمة الأنعام التي تفضل الله سبحانه وتعالى بها عليهم إلى قسمين قسم يتقربون به إلى الله فقالوا هذا لله بزعمهم ويجعلونه في مكان خاص وقسم آخر وهذا لشركائنا وقول الله عز وجل بزعمهم أي أن هذا مجرد زعم أما في الحقيقة, أما في الحقيقة ليس لله وهذا فيه تنبيه على مقام, التو مقام التوحيد هو في الحقيقة ليس لله جل وعلا لأنه لا يكون لله إلا ما كان خالصا فقولهم هذا لله قال بزعمهم هذا زعم دعوة لأن الذي لله لا يكون إلى الخالص أما إذا جئل لله شركاء فيه لا يكون لله ولا ولا يقبله الله ففي, ففي الآية تنبيه على ما ورد في الحديث القدسي الذي قال الله سبحانه وتعالى فيه. So let's just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph, continuing, he says and he explains further. He says, a, a that these or those, uh, these you know those things uh, that Allah has uh, blessed and you know provided to those people from cattle, from animals, you know, from livestock, uh, you know, pure and uh, beneficial to them. That Allah has favored that upon them. It's a favor upon them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, they, uh, they, they share their thanks. So part of their thanks is for Allah. And part of it is for other than Allah. And then this is obviously shirk. And so the shaykh goes on to say that there's two. That they separate into two uh, sections. The first section is where those people... They say that this is for Allah. Where in the ayah that we read, فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ that Where Allah says that they say that this is this is for Allah. But that's their assumption. That's their wrong. Allah says that's their assumption. They assume that this is for Allah. And then the other section or the other part is where they say, وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا And this is for our, um, you know, false deities. So that's where the shirk is happening. Um, uh, and then the shirk says, where Allah says, bizamihim. And the shirk says, what does it mean, bizamihim? He says, uh, it's just what they assume or what they claim or what they believe. And in actual reality, it's not for Allah. It is not for Allah. And the shirk says, in this is something to pay attention to in terms of the station of Tawheed. The great and grand station and level of Tawheed. And how important it is. Because as soon as you share 0.01% anything, an arm weight, whatever it is, a little bit, you share it, that act of worship with other than Allah, Allah does not accept it. Even if you thought that, oh yeah, this is, how, as they said, as those people said, as Allah mentions, that uh, uh, this is for Allah and this is for our you know, false, you know, deities and gods and whatever they believed in. 
And Allah says that no, it doesn't reach Allah, and it's not for Allah, but rather it was for their false deities. And this comes back to uh, the point mentioned in previous books and also earlier in in this book about uh, si- uh, sincerity uh, and uh, you know doing it purely for Allah's sake. That whatever act of worship you do, it should be it's for it should be for Allah's sake, one hundred percent. It cannot be directed anywhere else. And so the Sheikh then brings a hadith, a hadith al Qudsi here, where Allah Jalla says, "Ana agna shuraka an shirk, man amila man amila amalan ashraka fihi ma yaghiri taraktuhu wa shirka." So then, roughly meaning that Allah says that I am the most free of wanting partners, whoever. Does an action or a deed where he commits shirk with me, associates partners in worship with me, and does it for and shares it with someone else alongside me, then I have left him and it. Uh, I've left him, as in the person who's doing it, and I've left his shirk. That's a strong statement, and that's clear that we can see the gravity of shirk. Allah leaves him, leaves him. And leaves his shirk. He's, he's abandoned. He's left. Because of the gravity of the sin. That he's doing. Commit, and, and the gravest of the sins of course. As, as mentioned by the shaykh in previous lessons. So the shaykh goes on to say. فَالَّذِي يُتَخَذُ فِيهِ مَا اللَّهِ الْأَنْدَادِ لَا يَكُونُ لِلَّهِ فَهَذَا فِيهِ تَنْبِيهٌ عَلَى مَقَامِ التَّوْهِيدِ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَكُونُ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا الْخَالِسِ أما الذي ليس خالصا لا لا يكون لله لأن لله فيها الإخلاص مثل ما قال الله في الحج ولله على الناس حج البيت وأتم وأتم الحج والعمرة لله فلا يكون ذلك إلا بالإخلاص فإذا انتفى الإخلاص لم يكن لله ولم يقبل ولم يقبله الله سبحانه وتعالى ولهذا قال بزعمهم أي هذا زعم uh, هذا زعم أو هذا زعم زعموه وضياء الدعو وإلا من حيث الواقع والحقيقة فهو ليس لله لأن الذي لله إنما يكون الخالص. So then the Sheikh says here um, that, that that the meaning of this is that whoever does not purely direct all of their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he falls into shirk and he is no longer doing his act purely and sincerely for Allah and therefore if that happens he falls into shirk and then it's not accepted and then the shaykh he says that this is an issue of ikhlas as well and it always and that's where it's going back to and the shaykh also says for example he quotes a couple of ayahs uh, um, verse 97 from surah ali imran and verse 196 from Surah Al-Baqarah, that uh, roughly meaning that, and for Allah, is uh, and for Allah, people uh, that people make Hajj or visit the house of Allah, the Bayt Allah, Al Haram, and they perform Hajj for Allah. And then the other ayah, wa atimul Hajja wal Umrata lillah, and complete and carry out, carry out the acts of Hajj and Umrah. For Allah alone, for Allah purely and properly, that you do it for Allah's sake and you do it properly, and that when you go there or before you go there, that you prepare, you do it properly. You don't just say, Oh, I'm going to Umrah, for example. Let's say it's the first time you're going to Umrah. You just get up there, uh, uh, you book a ticket, get your visa, uh, book your hotels, and then off you go. And then you get there and you're like, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll just follow someone else. No, it doesn't work like that. Whatever you do, whatever action you do, whatever affair you get into, you should ask, what's upon me? What are the rules? What's upon me? What do I need to know? Okay, before I pray, I need to do wudu. I need to, I need, uh, uh, I need to perform ablution. Okay, how do I do that properly? If you don't ask and you just copy someone else, you know, what's the point even doing it? Because it won't get accepted because you, you know, you're not, you're not completing what's uh, obligatory upon you and what you've been commanded with. So the point being that whatever you do, 
need to know, be upon knowledge. If you can't, if you don't know, ask. You know? And so the Shaykh mentions this here. And then he goes on to say, he mentions the part of the ayah that we read earlier um, from Surah Al-Nam. Bizaamihim. Was it from Surah Al-Nam? One sec. Yeah. Verse 136. Uh, 136 from Surah Al-Nam. Bizaamihim, i.e. they claim that they believe that they are, or they assume that they are directing their worship to Allah. But it's not. It's shirk, as mentioned earlier. And that's that's what they claim. Uh uh, falsely of course And the shaykh says In reality It's not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The act of worship Whether they did Whether they sacrificed Or something else They didn't do it For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In reality uh, uh, They have Done it for other than Allah And there is uh, A lack of sincerity And purity In their actions So the shaykh continues He says فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا أي لأسنامنا ومعبوداتنا وأوثاننا فيتقربون إلى الله جل وعلا بنصيب يجعلون نصيبا من الحرث والأنعام ويقولون هذا لله وبزعمهم هذا لله بزعمهم ويجعلون نصيبا آخر لشركاء يتقربون به إليهم من دون الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم مع ذلك لو أن واحدة من بهيمة الأنعام في القسم في القسم أو النصيب الذي خصصوه لله بزعمهم فرت إلى القسم الآخر الذي خصص للأسلام لا لا يعيدونها إلى مكانها بل يتركونها تبقى مع نصيب الأسلام ولو ولو حصل العكس فرت واحدة مما خصص للأسلام إلى النصيب الذي خصص لله بزعمهم يعيدونه ولهذا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى فما كان لشركائهم فلا يصل إلى الله وما كان لله فهو يصل إلى شركائهم ساء ما يحكمون. So then the Sheikh clarifies now and rounds up what he was been talking about earlier, and he says that going back to that scenario where um, a group of people, let's say, have sacrificed something for Allah, so they portion, let they portion it. They portion it out. So I think this is the, going to be the, the the closing statement on on here, and the, uh, it should make clear sense. They they direct a portion of that for Allah, and they direct a portion of that sacrifice to other than Allah, to their you know false deities. And even though they've they've sectioned this portion for Allah, and they've uh, for Allah, for example, all the sections going to go to other than Allah, the other meat or sacrifice or whatever it was. Then Allah says to them in the ayah that we just read, "For ma kana li shurakaim, fala yasilu ila Allah, wa ma kana li Allah fawa yasilu ila shurakaim." Sa'ama yahkumun. Meaning that uh, what the Sheikh said here as well as explained that in reality, because they, they are fall, they fallen into shirk. None of it is accepted. Allah does not accept any of it, even if they said. We this portion is for Allah. No, the mushriks they are upon shirk, and as long as they are upon shirk, they are obviously uh, not upon the state of Islam and Tawheed, and therefore the actions are not accepted. So the Shaykh goes on to say, "Ay, anna hukm, uh, anna hukm haula uh, aswa al hukm wa akbahu, wa la aswa minhu, wa la akbah." So then the Shaykh says that the way they go about doing their business as explained here in terms of saying oh this portions for Allah this is that and how they um, de- uh, delineate that and how they um, make past judgments like that then the Sheikh says this is the worst of judgments and the most despicable of judgments you, you, you can make and assumptions so then the Sheikh goes on to say فَهَذِي الْآيَةُ فِيهَا بَيَانٌ وتصوير وإيضاح لحال المشركين المتخذين الأنداد وأن من من أنواع من أنواع شركهم وصنوف كفرهم بالله سبحانه وتعالى اتخاذ الأنداد في باب الضبح فيذبحون لله ويذبحون للأسنان وما يذبحونه لله سبحانه وتعالى لا يقبل لا يقبله الله عز وجل منهم لأن الشرك مبتل للعمل كل كله محبط له كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ولقد أوحي إليك وإلى الذين من قبلك لئن أشركت ليحبتن عملك ولا تكونن من الخاسرين بل الله بل الله فعبد بكم من الشاكرين. 
فالشرك محبط للعمل كله ناقل لصاحبه من ملة الإسلام ولهذا جاء كما مر معنا في الآية المتقدمة أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى لنبيه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أن يسدع بالحق والتوحيد والهدى مبتلا أقائد المشركين ناقضا ناقضا شرك شركهم وذلال وذلالهم وباتلهم بقوله قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحيا ومحياي ومماتي لله رب رب لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say here in the next paragraph that that he says this is what's been discussed so far is it's a clarification to us and it sheds light on the condition of the polytheists how they take rivals alongside Allah besides Allah and how they make partners besides Allah in worship and that and and from that we see the types of shirk the types of shirk that that uh, that that they have and the types of disbelief that they're upon and how they take rivals besides Allah in the subject of in this particular subject that we that the Sheikh's been discussing uh, of sacrifice dhabh and that they uh, sacrifice they sacrifice for Allah this is with their with their assumption as mentioned earlier they sacrifice for Allah and they sacrifice for their false deities and in reality they're not sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah does not accept Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept it from them. Why? Because shirk, shirk, it, it basically nullifies all of your deeds. It nullifies all deeds. Whatever deeds you had of good, it nullifies them. It deletes them. It extinguishes them completely. And it, whatever good that you had, you no longer have it. You're on a balance of zero. And the Sheikh says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, وَلَقَدْ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ To the end of the ayah, so that ayah was from Surah, uh, Surah Al-Zumar, verse 65. So if we go to verse 65 of Surah Al-Zumar, we will see, the, we'll, we'll go through the meaning. Verse 65, yeah, sorry, 65. And indeed, it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it was to those, Allah's messengers before you. If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain and you will certainly be among the losers. So that's very clear to us there. And the Shaykh brings the evidence for, uh, uh, for what he's mentioned earlier. And then the Shaykh goes on to say that, he says, because as we all know, shirk, it... It nullifies your deeds, all of your deeds, and it takes you out of the fold of Al Islam. And because of that, um, uh, then because of that, the Sheikh says that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, uh, He commanded His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that He clarify and make apparent and clarify. With truth and tawheed and guidance, with with the, by clarifying the truth and the meaning of tawheed, and come with the guidance, and 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 also by way of that falsifying all the false beliefs, the false religions, the false beliefs of the mushrikeen and other than them, and uh, um, falsifying and portraying that the shirk that they're upon is all misguidance and falsehood. And then the Sheikh mentions the ayah from earlier, قُلْ إِنَّ salati wa nusuki. To the end of it, we've already gone through that. And then uh, the second, uh, the, the ayah that follows that, لَا شَرِيكَ لَوْ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوْلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And then that bit which I don't think we did mention, but we'll go through that now. لَا شَرِيكَ لَوْ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوْلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Meaning that and he has no partner. Allah has no partner. And with that, and 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 and, I've been commanded. I that Allah has commanded me 
with that which has preceded uh, preceded and I am from the first of the Muslims the first of the submitters to Allah's will first of the Muslims so then the Shaykh goes on to say فَهَذَا الَّذِي أَمْرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى بِهِ نَبِيَهُ وَأَمْرَ بِهِ جَمِيعَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَلِأَجْلِ ذَلِكَ خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ كَمَا قَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَأْبُدُونَ وَلِأَجْلِ ذَلِكَ أَرْسَلَ التَّبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى الرُّسُلَ كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتَ So then concluding this paragraph, the Shaykh goes on to say that, uh, that Allah has commanded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded his messenger and commanded and commanded all of the messengers and prophets in or, uh, uh, and the sheikh says in order that uh, that uh, why the sheikh says why so what he actually says why for the, what's the reason for that because allah created all of creation for the reason of worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, and the evidence for that is as mentioned, uh, I think in previous lessons as well, from Surah Al Dariyat, verse 56, Wama kharaktul jinna wal insa illa liyabudun, where Allah says, I did, Allah uh, Azza wa Jal says, well, um, I did not create the jinn and mankind but to worship me. That's the reason why Allah, that's a primary purpose why Allah created us, the jinn and mankind, is to worship Him alone. And not associate any partners with him. That's the whole prime purpose of us being around here. That's the main purpose. And then the Shaykh goes on to say, and because of that, it says, and because of that, and on the back of that, that's why Allah sent uh, the messengers, the prophets and messengers. Um, as mentioned in the next ayah, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْدَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ from, uh, from Surah Al-Nahl, verse 36. That indeed, verily, and indeed, we sent, uh, we sent to every nation a messenger proclaiming, worship Allah, and worship Allah alone upon Tawheed, of course, and stay away from the false deities, the Tawut. Stay away from the false deities, right? And that's the meaning of La ilaha illallah as well. Affirming worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and negating anything else or negating everything else so Allah is the so is the deity deserved of all worship and there's no deity besides him in truth so the shaykh goes on to say let's see where we are okay we probably got another 10 minutes inshallah we should be finished inshallah so then the shaykh continues he says وَقَدْ جَاءَ النَّبِيِّنَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فِي أَحَادِيثِهِ الشَّرِيفَةِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ التَّحْذِيرَ الشَّدِيدِ مِنْ صَرْفِ هَذِي الْإِبَادَةِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَلَأَنَا مَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ وَبَيَانُ أَنَّهُ مَتْرُود مُبَعَرْ من رحمة الله سبحانه وتعالى كما جاء في الحديث الصحيح حديث حديث علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وارضاه. so the sheikh says that in the start of this paragraph he mentions that and and he says this is why the uh, the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, or this is why it came in many hadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم regarding being warned severe stern warnings from directing any part of your worship. By the big or small, it doesn't matter if it's small, it's not accepted. And we'll see in a minute when the Sheikh explains on the next page how little, even an atom's weight of uh, uh, direction of your worship, if it goes elsewhere to other than Allah, you commit shirk and you're out, out of the fold of Islam. So the Sheikh mentions here uh, uh, about the ahadith of the Prophet, ﷺ, many of them stern warnings regarding this, uh, directing any part of your worship to other than Allah. And you know, we know what happened as the Sheikh explained that uh, you're, uh, you'll 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 uh, exit the fold of Islam and all the good deeds that the hard work that you done, it'd be it'd be in vain. It would be in vain. So the Sheikh he brings this ayah that uh, um, 
that um, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, this uh, hadith that um, the great Sahabi Abi, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu, wardahu, mentioned on the authority of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Haddathani Rasulullah, Haddathani Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi arba'in, qala, la'ana Allahu man zabaha li ghayri la, wa la'ana Allahu man la'ana walidayh, a walidah, wa la'ana Allahu man ghayra manar al-ard, wa la'ana Allahu man awa muhdithan. So then the uh, so then the Sheikh goes on to mention this hadith and it's it's where Ali Ali radiallahu anhu he says that the Prophet sallam related to me said to me uh, regarding four four things he mentioned four things to him he said Allah has cursed the one who sacrifices for other than Allah or to other than Allah Allah curses the one who curses his parents and Allah curses the one who changes the the uh, the borders on a land on a land for example uh, changing the borders on the land for example you've got a patch of land and then you extend your wall for example and it's not your land but you're taking it Allah uh, curses the one who does that uh, and Allah curses the one who Allows an innovator, a mubtadi, to stay with him. Who protects an innovator? Who gives shelter to an innovator? Who gives refuge to an innovator? So the Sheikh continues. He says, "Fadhakara, fadhakara alayhi salatu wa salam umuran arba'a malgoon ashabuha matrudoon min rahmatillah tabarak wa taala wa bada bi akhtariha." وأشنعها وأفضعها وهو الشرك في الضبح بتقديم الضبيحة والقربان لغير الله قال لعن الله من ذبح لغير الله وهذا اللعن يشمل كل يشمل كل ذبح تقرب تقرب به لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى ولو كان المذبوح من أتفه الحيوان وأخسه لأن المقصود لأن المقصود عمل القلب والتقرب فإذا ذبح الإنسان متقربا إلى غير الله ولو أخس الحيوان استحق هذا اللعن ودخول النار وأن يبوء بسخة الله سبحانه وتعالى وإقابه وبدأ هذه الأمور الأربعة بلعن, بلعن من ذبح لغير الله لأن هذا شرك وما بعده كبائر وشرك أكبر الكبائر وأعظم الموبقات كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ألا أنبئكم بأكبر الكبائر قلنا بلى يا رسول الله قال الإشراك بالله So then the Sheikh goes on to say And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned these four affairs that whoever is falls under any of these four is cursed and is far away and uh, is far away from the mercy of Allah rather he will not receive or attain the mercy of Allah because obviously the uh, the opposite of mercy is being cursed isn't it so the shaykh goes on to say and 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 the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he he start he mentioned the first he mentioned the first which is the most dangerous and the uh, most despicable and wretched and he says and that is shirk in terms of the shirk here being mentioned is sacrificing for other than Allah uh, a sacrificial animal wherever it might be and uh, to other than Allah and so the shaykh he goes on to say and this curse it encompasses uh, all types and forms of sacrifices to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if that thing that is sacrificed is the most lowly the most thing that's never given attention to and we'll see the example inshallah is coming regarding that the most lowly the most uncared for uh, sac- sacrifice that the smallest thing that no one cares about or may 
you know, scoff at, for example, oh, you know, you sacrifice that, that's nothing, for example, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter why, because the Sheikh says the point here, uh, and, and the point here is uh, that it's the action that's being done, that it's the action of the heart and seeking nearness to other than Allah. This is the point. Uh, and he says that the person is sacrificing and trying to seek nearness to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if it is the most lowly of animals that he's presented with, is come forth to present that sacrifice to other than Allah. It doesn't matter because it's to do with a directing worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereby committing shirk, al-akbar, the major shirk, the major polytheism. Yeah? And that the person is is is, is uh, uh, earns the uh, anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment. And so the Sheikh says that the Prophet Sallallahu he started these affairs, these these four affairs, with the uh, first affair, which was was mentioning is in regards to shirk, i.e. sacrificing to other than Allah. Why? Because it's shirk. The Sheikh says because it's shirk, and uh, uh, and then after and the other three things are mentioned after that in this hadith uh, are the major sins. And the Sheikh says that shirk is the most is on top. It's the head of the major sins. It's at the top. And it's the most, it's the greatest of uh, of uh, major sins or cardinal sins, if you want to call them that, uh, and the destructive sins. The al Mubiqat, It is the, at the top of the seven destructors that uh, that I've mentioned in previous lessons, I believe, as well. And so that's why uh, 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 that was mentioned first, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned he mentioned the most serious thing first. And then the Sheikh says, the, where the Prophet ﷺ mentions, "Allah una biukum bi akbar al kabair." Kulna bala ya Rasulullah qala al ishraku billah. And then in a different hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ says, "Shall I not, shall I not inform you of the most, uh, the biggest of the major sins?" And the Sahaba they said, "We said, yes, O Rasulullah, yes, inform us." And he said. Shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That's what he said So then the shirk goes on to say وَتَقْدِيمُ الْقَرَابِينِ غَيْرِ لَا يَلَّذِي لَأَنَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم وَسَلَّمَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ فَعَيْلَهُ يَكُونُ مُسْتَحِقٍ هَذَا اللَّانِ وَالْتَرْدْ وَالْإِبْعَادْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَدُخُولَ النَّارِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مُتَقَرِبٌ رضي الله عنه يرفع أن النبي صلى الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال دخل رجل ال دخل دخل رجل الجنة في ذباب ودخل رجل النار في ذباب هذا أمر عجيب للغاية الذباب من أخص الحيوان وأحقره وأط وأطفحه حيوان حقير ولا يؤبه به وليس له أي مكانة في النفوس بل يتأذى الناس بل يتأذى الناس منه ويقول عليه الصلاة والسلام دخل رجل دخل رجل دخل رجل الجنة في ذباب ودخل رجل النار في ذباب. so we're getting towards the end of the lesson. so then the sheikh he mentions a few things you already mentioned so we won't repeat that. but then he goes on to mention this. And uh, this was mentioning that the explanation of what we're talking about uh, further will come here. So it's here now. We, we've arrived at that part of uh, of of, uh, of the lesson. The Sheikh he says that that with regards to the hadith of uh, uh, from the uh, fil Musnad, he says al Musnad and Tariq. So it's from the Musnad. Uh, I, I think this is referring to al Musnad Ahmad and Tariq ibn Shihab radiyallahu anhu. This um, uh, this Sahabi, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, where he narrated what the Prophet ﷺ said, that a man will enter paradise because of a fly, and he will end, and a man will enter the hellfire because of a fly. And you might think, well, what's this going? What's going on here? Because of a fly? I'm not really understanding it. And inshallah, we will in a second. So the Sheikh says that this is in a, a, a very strange and uh, also at the same time amazing, like shocking. Like wait, how? And how is that possible that somebody could, you know, 
uh, entered the hellfire because of it. Uh, this this fly, this uh, worthless, small fly that nobody cares about. Nobody cares about. The only times we ever, let's be honest, we ever talk about flies is when they're annoying us. Uh, uh, you know, they're causing a nuisance uh, and being harmful. And, you know, you're trying to eat and the flies are flying around or you're sitting there and you're just constantly being annoyed by a fly. That's the only, that's probably the only time we mention a fly, right? So, uh, in most cases. And so, the Sheikh strikes that example for us, just in comparison, that such a thing that nobody cares about, that it's not in the minds of the people. We don't care about flies, and we never think about them. And to be honest with you, today, we're mentioning a fly, but I can't remember the last time, probably any of us, even myself, that I thought about a fly, you know? You know, so, so, so the Sheikh makes that point, and then he, he goes on to say, and mention this hadith. So he says, وَدَخْلَ رَجُلُ الْجَنَّةِ فِي ذُبَابِ وَدَخْلَ رَجُلُ النَّارِ فِي ذُبَابِ تَعْجَبَ الصَّحَابَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ قَالُوا وَكَيْفَ ذَاكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So, so then the Prophet, so then the Sahaba who were listening to the Prophet ﷺ say this about these two types of people. One man goes to the hellfire because of it. One man goes to the, uh, goes to paradise because of it. And they said to the, the uh, they said to the Prophet, the Sahaba رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ said to the Prophet, they said, and how and how is that? And how did that happen? Or and, and how is that? And they said, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Wa uh, 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 So then the Prophet Sallallahu says, uh, "Said, Marra rajulan ala qom lahum sanam la yajuzu ahad hatta yuqarb lahu shay'an." Fakalu li ahadihima qarb qal. Fakalu li ahadihima qarb. Qala ma indi shay'un uqarbuhu. Uh, then he, he goes on to say, "Qalu, qarib walau zubaban fa akhda zubaban wa zabhahu fa taqarrab bihi ala dalik sanam fa mata fa dakhla nar." So then we'll just keep some of the text here because uh, uh, I, I was I know this hadith uh, pretty well, so I, I, I can go through this quickly uh, because we're getting close to an hour now. So so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Um, that the uh, the sahab the the sahaba they asked him they said and how is that and he says that two men passed by a people a group of people um and they had they worshipped a uh, a statue right an idol they worshipped an idol and they would not allow people to pass that area except by a condition that they sacrifice something to this. Uh, they, they they sacrifice something to this uh, to this um, idol. So one of them said. So one of the two, one of them said. Uh, uh, so they said to one of them, sacrifice, sacrifice something. And he replied to those people. He said, I don't have anything to sacrifice. And they said, sacrifice even if it's a it's a fly, even if it's a fly. Even if it's something like that, a fly, you find it around, grab it, sacrifice it. So then he took the fly and he sacrificed it to this, sacrificed and presented it to this idol. And he died, and he died upon, and he died upon uh, shirk and kufr, and he entered the hellfire. He entered the hellfire because he committed shirk. Right? And uh, and the other person in, in this story, the other person, he didn't do that. And they killed him, but he died upon the state of Tawheed and he entered the hell, uh, and he entered paradise. Rahmullah. So then the Shaykh goes, he says, Huna Fa'u Sababiya bi Sabu Dalika Wahada Yadulu Anna Kabla Hadan Kissa Kana Musliman wa illa fama ma'ana kolu ma'ana koli fadakalan nar di anna hada ذكر السبب الذي بموجبه دخل النار فهذا معناه أنه كان قبل ذلك للإسلام وبعد أن أن ذبح ذبابا لغير الله كفر وأشرك ودخل بذلك النار والدخول للنار بسبب الشرك دخول أبدي وخلود سرمدي يبقى المشرك المشرك في النار أبد الآباد مخلدا فيها إذا دخل النار بسبب الشرك فإنه لا يخرج منها أبد الآباد فدخل النار فدخل النار بذباب كان مسلما فذبح ذباب لغير ذباب لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى فدخل به النار. 
So then the Sheikh wraps up here uh, on, on this paragraph, and inshallah we'll stop here as well. But the Sheikh he explains, he says that that basically this person it shows us that this person was upon Islam, he was upon Tawheed, but because of the act and him, him uh, sacrificing that uh, and bringing forth uh, even a fly of all things, something like that, because he fell into shirk by way of that because he, he sacrificed it to this f- false deity and shared his worship with other than Allah as mentioned previously and early in the lesson then he, fought, he fell into the greater shirk and as the shaykh explained earlier as well that a person who dies in this state then he go, he's, he will be in the hellfire forever and he will never leave the hellfire because he died uh, a death of uh, being in jahiliyyah and uh, being upon kufr and not in the state of Islam and he'll remain in the hellfire forever and that and that will be his abode and that is it so the sheikh mentions that here and he says even though it, even even if it is a fly you know and as the sheikh mentioned earlier that uh, the point being that it's the uh, uh, it's the act or the deed that's been done and the and, and the and the starting point is from the heart and uh, with the, uh, with the uh, lack of uh, sincerity yeah so then the Sheikh he goes, وَإِذَا كَانَ هَذَا دَخْلُ النَّارِ بِسَبَبَ ذُبَابَ قَرَبَهُ لِسَنًا فَكَيْفَ بِمَنْ يُقَرِّبَ الشَّاتَ أَوْ السَّمِينَ أَوْ الْبَقَرَ أَوْ النَّاقَةَ وَيَنْتَقِي أَسْمَنُهَا وَأَتْيَبَهَا وَأَجْوَدُهَا ثُمَّ يُرِبْ دَمَهَا وَمُتَقَرِّبًا بِهَا لِغَيْرِ uh, so then the Sheikh just finally mentions here that um, so then he's, he he brings contrast to this so if we're talking about flying this situation and we can see even by a fly something so tiny yeah can lead you to the hellfire then what about other than that when people sacrifice to other than Allah they sacrifice uh, you know uh, whether it's a camel whether it's a sheep whether it's a goat you know whether it's a, it's a cow whatever, then what about that? And and was, uh, was what about from the perspective of, you know, them feeding it to make it really fat and big and trying to, you know, do their best and then they commit shirk as well. Then what about that? And also uh, for the people who uh, sacrifice to a grave, for example, uh, as, a, as, a, as an example in the shirk, as a, uh, to a grave or even to a jinn or other than that, as mentioned earlier. So inshallah, uh, we will we'll stop here. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we've reached an hour now. So uh, I think that's enough, inshallah, for today. And we'll continue next week. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astagfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.